Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We have two cameras here. This one, and this one. Now, we are going to do a comparison video today, but it's not what you think. It's not a comparison on which camera is better, which camera has the best specs, or which camera is more affordable. Instead, we just want to take a look at the aesthetics. And we want your opinion on who do you think did it better for the retro look? Nikon or Fujifilm? Now you may be wondering why is this comparison even a thing? Well, we at Castle Cameras have an open store so people can pop in and take a look at the cameras. It just so happens one week we had these two cameras side by side. Now granted, specs wise, the X-T5 is out gonna perform the ZFC, right? But side by side on a shelf behind the counter, all you can ever see is this, the aesthetics and the looks. So I wanna go over the looks aesthetically I just want your opinion on who you think actually made the better retro looking camera. And I will talk about the bodies a little bit just to give you guys some insight, but I'm not gonna try and push you one way or the other. So let's take a look, an overlook of these two cameras to start with. Let's start with the ZFC. So the ZFC, as we can see, if we just zoom in just a little bit here, get some more light over the front. Okay, so looking at the ZFC, it's a very pretty looking camera. Hasn't got much dials or buttons at the front, and it definitely does look retro. Nice lever out on the sides here, and then we have our ports. As we go over the top there, it's very similar to how the Fujifilm is set up as well, but the dials look slightly different. And they've gone for the lever out across the top here as well as a nice added finish. Going around the back, we have a flip out screen and then some more dial buttons. One thing I will say about this camera though, as I'm holding it, don't let this judge this change the judgment, but it does feel a little bit more plastic orientated compared to the, the Fujifilm. But aesthetically, I think this thing looks pretty beautiful. One thing I will say as well is here, we have a circular viewfinder, which apparently is more retro. So yeah. That's our key differences. <laughs> but we will dive in a little bit deeper to all the intricate details between the two cameras. But I just wanted to get a quick overview of the ZFC by Nikon. Let's move over to the X-T5. Or the X-T series, I'd like to say, because the X-T4 is very similar as well. But there is one major difference between these two cameras. And if you're a Fujifilm user, you'll know the difference. So starting off, a little bit more buttons on the X-T5. I apologize for the huge lens in comparison. Uh, but you can see all the buttons here. We've got some select dials here as well. And we've gone for more of a classical finish across the whole of the body here, rather than any leverets added. The side we have our ports and the top. The dials look very similar as well, so there's ZFC. And then when we're looking at the back here, we see the major difference. One, this screen is pretty dirty with all our fingerprints. I should have cleaned that. And then we have a screen that can actually articulate in this such manner, tilt, rather than completely do a full articulation. And our viewfinder is now a circular mixed rectangular one. <laughs> More buttons at the back here. So they do actually have some major similarities, but let's put them side by side and zoom in a little bit and take a look at all the major detail differences so we can help you guys make your decision on what you think is a better retro looking camera, if there even is one. Okay, so taking a closer look at the top dials on the ZFC, we see here we have our switching mechanism is actually on the side here. So we've got manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, and program, as well as auto that we can select through there. And this selector itself is this little dial, which is actually easy to grip. There's no confusion on how to navigate through that system there, right? Our top dials here, same as the Fujifilm I say, you can't rotate them without disengaging the lock. Okay, it's a different mechanism. So on this one, we have to hold it down to be able to move it. And then it locks automatically. Then we have a hot shoe here. And then moving over to the other dial, we can see they've carried on with the black uh, and white text set with some blues. Same again, push down to twist. So we get that focus there for you guys. And that moves it around. 
the automatic locks as you let go. You'll notice here we have photography and videography selection. Once again, that can be selected by a switch here. And then this is pretty cool here, this little screen. And this little screen, as we pop the camera on and rotate the lens, it tells us what f-stop we're at. So 3.5 there, which is pretty interesting. It's nice to have a little screen dial to do that. Then we have our composure, <laughs> exposure compensation here. I always say that wrong. And then our switch and our record button to the right. So that's how the ZFC is set up. Pretty nice. Now let's take a look at the X-T5. So moving on to the Fujifilm, we can see here that we can control our ISO. This is our typical ISO dial. Uh, but with this one, it's a push to unlock. That's just locked it. Push to unlock, and then we can rotate it how we please. Back down to lock, and then we locked in place. Underneath that dial, we have here some of our functionality buttons. So we can see panoramic there, advanced mode, bracketing, and all the other ones that we have. Now to control that is this dial here at the side which is okay to access, but I feel the ridge around here actually impedes people with larger hands, as you guys like to point out, I do have larger hands, to be able to access that dial. So that's one thing to bear in mind. Obviously then we have our little dial up to focus wheel just here. Now moving on to the next dials that we have, once again, push button to lock in, push button to release. Underneath that, like the um, Nikon, we have a stills mode and a movie mode, mode sorry. And to select that once again is a button here, but the ridge is actually kind of cutting into where I press the button, I will say. So you kind of have to do it on a slightly different angle. I wish that dial was a little bit more embossed or st stuck out, sorry. And then we have our composure wheel, a <laughs> compensation wheel. Why do I say composure? <laughs> compensation wheel here with compensation dial. Uh, set that back to zero. On off switch, also trigger. You'll notice on this particular shutter release button here, we actually have a thread inside. So we can actually thread a remote into this one, which is pretty handy. And that is pretty retro, I must say. And then we have some custom buttons and our scroll wheels. But what we don't have is any top dials, any kind of digital formats on top of the camera. And then moving to the back of the camera, these two cameras are actually really similar. We can hear, we'll see we've got a playback over here and we've got the delete button over the here over here we've got the af on scroll wheel and a q let's quickly move over to the nikon where we have it but obviously nikon like to do things backwards right so we've got the play button first then we've got the trash can and then we've got the button here to select uh if we're looking through the viewfinder or the lcd then we've got the af lock buttons and then the scroll wheel very similar if you look at these two cameras side by side as i scroll them across they do look very similar in that format as we go along. Okay, right. So we've had a look at the dials. Let's take a look at the actual finish of the product. So let's focus all the way in as close as we can go here. And let's take a look at the finish. Now, as you can see, this is the Nikon's finish. You can probably see more plastics around here. And this is kind of like, do you believe it's, it's metal here, but then plastic on the dials? Hopefully that can come across in the in the video here. And this is a type of leverette that we've got on here. Take a look around the front. There we are. Right, now let's take a look at the details of the Fujifilm. So as we go in, this is the type of leverette we have here. Plastic buttons again, I believe but I think we may have some more metals. It feels like it's metal anyway, but I think it's actually plastic as well. It's just a heavier camera, and I think that gives you the illusion that it's built better, but I think it's just this weight that's doing that. But it is weather sealed, so there's a difference. And then we'll take a look at the front here. I'm actually surprised because when I have these cameras separately, I always prefer one or the other, and I'm not gonna say which one, but here, having them literally side by side in front of my face, I feel they are very, very similar. So there we kind of have it. It's just a, a quick overlook of these two cameras and which one has provided more of a retro feel. Which one would you prefer to go for? 
And we're not talking about specs, let's just talk about the way it looks and the weight functionality. So obviously this one has a flip screen on it. One thing I will say with the new Nikon lenses, they look absolutely incredible just like this. Only problem is when you engage the lens itself and turn the dial, it becomes an ugly plastic lens. I do not like the look of this lens now. It looks way better like that. Can't they just do an internal kind of zoom? Whereas obviously we all know the 1855 from the Fujifilm, built like a tank, uh, but it is quite a big chunky monster in comparison to the new smaller lenses that are coming out, which makes it really nice and compact. And sorry, when we was talking about the F dial, the F stop numbers here on the little dial, obviously on the Fujifilm, if you're not aware already, you access that by the, the ring at the back here, but it only displays on the back screen. There's no dial anywhere to show you, unless you've got one of the nicer lenses where it actually shows on the lens itself. So yeah, so that's what we have right today. A little comparison between an XT series and the ZFC series from Nikon and Fujifilm. Which do you prefer? Comment below.